Support for LPB's 2022 Louisiana Young Heroes is provided by At AmeriHealth Caritas, Louisiana, we help people get care, stay well, and build healthy communities. Care is the heart of our work at AmeriHealth Caritas, Louisiana. And by the U.S. Army Baton Rouge Recruiting Battalion. Community Coffee and the East Baton Rouge Parish Library, with additional support from Hotel Indigo and Dimco. Hi, I'm Kara St. Cyr. For the past 27 years, Louisiana Public Broadcasting has selected an inspiring group of students to honor as Louisiana Young Heroes. Right now, you'll meet seven students from across our state who LPB is recognizing this year in a program that shines a light on their extraordinary achievements. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate and honor LPB's 2022 Louisiana Young Heroes. Now 16, Allison Callender does not remember much about the 18 months she spent at St. Jude Children's Hospital in Memphis. She was four when doctors diagnosed her with neuroblastoma, a rare cancer that affects children mostly under the age of five. It develops from immature nerve cells. They gave her a 30% chance of surviving it. I remember a few things. I don't remember all of the details. I remember being poked and picked at, but I mean, it wasn't terrible. It was just, it was a lot, especially being four. There are plenty of reminders of her time there and how she came through it. The chemotherapy and radiation, being cancer-free ever since. Cancer-free does not mean unaffected. Her treatment contributed to a partial hearing loss. I know that at school with my hearing loss, um, I used to have a microphone my teachers would wear that would connect their voice to my hearing aids. I could hear them better, but now I've kind of gotten to where I can read their lips if I can't hear them. And most of the time I'm put in the front um, in a class and that helps me hear even better. And I've just kind of learned to read their lips. And if I mishear something or don't hear them, I can ask a classmate. I actually had the privilege to teach Allison and um, <laughs> really get that one-on-one -on -one, um, experience with her as a hearing impaired child in my classroom makes me just very more aware of my students. Like I said, that just need that little extra help. And it was, it was such a privilege to teach her and for her to really, um, she taught me. Allison's life experience has set the table for what she looks forward to. She hopes to attend UL Lafayette and she wants to become a nurse. That's always what I wanted to do ever since I've been to St. Jude. I've seen like where my privileges are and I feel like that's where the Lord is leading me. And I've learned a lot from being there and just being in the hospital all those years. That's really what I wanna do. Allison remains an active volunteer with St. Jude. I love to do the pantry drive for the Ronald McDonald House, which is a house through St. Jude. And I just like to do it because when we were at St. Jude, I know that I stayed at the Ronald McDonald House a lot and my family, like they lived there as their housing and they always gave us so much. And the pantry, like you're free to go in that pantry anytime you want. There's food in there, like you don't have to pay for any of that. And I just like to give back and just make sure that if there's a family there and they need like something to eat, that they have that food and they have that opportunity to go in there and have that. Allison has a personality that pushes forward. Uh, when she gets something in her mind, she's going to push forward to that. And it's always for somebody else. Uh, I have a niece who has a um, learning disability and of all of us, there are six grandkids and all of my family. Allison just, she cleaves to this, you know, her cousin and they have such a beautiful relationship. So anytime there's a child who is in need or someone, whether they be, you know, an adult or young adult, or Allison just has a beautiful spirit about her that plugs into people with other disabilities or learning deficits. And, and I think that's the thing that I just love about her so much is that she 
she is quiet. And if you first meet her, you may think she's a little introverted, but she's checking out the situation. Like she's reading the room mm -hmm. and she's picking out the people who need the most love, who need the most support, who need the most words of affirmation. And she's going to give them to them. I think a hero is someone who makes the most out of a bad situation. And instead of doing negative that goes into the situation, they go forth with positive to bring hope to other people. Gray's journey to heroism was a difficult one. I've been from home to home, and recently, since last May, I was homeless for six months until my birthday. So it's been, it's been rough, a rough 18 years. On the outside, it was clear something wasn't right. Just physical appearance, walking around, shoulders slumped, walking around, head looking to the ground. Uh, when you speak to her, she wouldn't look in you in the eye and she wouldn't project her voice. Um, so that kind of let me know that she didn't really see herself as valuable. Uh, she didn't think her voice mattered. Uh, she didn't think she deserved to be heard. So just those were my interpretations from just the physicality. And then when we began to speak, um, she was really forward with sharing. Kadra Ellis is a teacher at Thrive Academy where Gray goes to school. The two bonded over time and Ellis learned about Gray's home life. And she reached out to me and mentioned about her not being able to go home or not being comfortable going home and basically asked like, what can I do? And so I made some phone calls and reached out to some of our counselors here and then they took it from there. Um, and next thing I know, you know, two weeks later, she's a different person. That's when the real transformation began. Gray was officially moved out of her abusive home and placed with a foster mother, Connie Orr. She started to come out of her shell and ran for SGA president. She joined after school clubs and developed an interest in graphic design. It was actually in the moment kind of thing where I just was like, okay, I'll see if I can do it. And I did. So it's another one of those situations where I didn't expect for something good to happen and it did. So that's, I'm always shocked when good things happen. He's the founder and the CEO of Nabi Lotus Cosmetics. Let's hear it up for Corinne. But most importantly, she became a young entrepreneur. Through the organization, Gray created her own skincare line called Nabi Lotus. The name stands for rebirth and beauty. It's taken me a while because over the years I realized it's something that I wanted to do, but I never really think I, I never really thought I could make it into something feasible to sell. So the first one, I call it the butterfly wash or the Navi wash. Through this project, Gray conquered her fear of public speaking. She inspired her classmates to take a leap of faith, but more importantly, she gained confidence in herself. Shoulders back, looking you in the eye. Um, when she speaks, she speaks with more confidence. And it wasn't, um, it wasn't a drastic change. It was minimal at first, but it kind of grew over time. I feel very excited because I usually, I usually set my expectations way lower. So I, that's why it was such a shock because I, I think there's so many more people doing so much more things but actually getting nominated for it and actually getting it, it made me realize that what I do is something big. The things I do aren't just minimal. It actually inspires people. It's been a long journey and not an easy one, but by Gray's definition, a hero overcomes adversity, makes the best of a bad situation, and spreads positivity. In 2022, she has surely done that. I'm Mason McCart and I'm 17 and I go to St. Mary's Catholic School. I'm really just social and I'm a really big social butterfly. I just love to go around and meet new people and just learn a lot about others. So it's really, I think that's how I'd be described. But Mason wasn't always that way. There was a time when his parents would have called him an introvert with a shy disposition. He was really pretty quiet and reserved and um, just with others, I guess. He didn't didn't do much. He he was he was shut in a lot. And then it started uh, with social media, a bad influence to a lot of a lot of people. Uh, but he took it and used it to to 
to gain personal growth from. Social media was the beginning of his transformation. During the pandemic, feelings of isolation and loneliness were starting to surface, but the internet provided an outlet. So uh, I started this blog when I started cooking for your cause, and uh, um, I really started posting on it because I felt like I felt the impact of negative mental health when I was in quarantine, and I just wanted to make sure that everyone, like all of my friends and all of just my mutual friends, that they were able to have resources and that they could they knew that they could talk to me if they were ever having issues. And so I started this blog. And so I really just started this to sort of make sure everyone knows that they have a friend. The blog is called allsmileshere.org. Mason purchased the domain so he could keep everything going throughout the outbreak. But this wasn't Mason's only breakthrough during the pandemic. Mason asked his school principal if he could walk the halls and sell cookies he baked. He got the green light to create what's now called Cooking with a Cause. So Cooking for a Cause is a, really it is a baking club where we just sell baked goods every single week and we donate the proceeds to an organization or a charity or an individual in need. And so we've donated to places such as the Women's Resource Center in Natchitoches or just a, a teacher at my school who had COVID and we really just wanted to help uh, with everything with that. So it really just, we donate to people who are in need and people who we think could really use this. And so. We collect the proceeds every month. It's a new person every single month or new organization every month that we donate to. They call me the cookie man. <laughs> and then within six months, we had someone donate $5,000 to help um, endow a scholarship uh, fund that we were donating to. So we ended up being able to donate over $6,000 to help endow the scholarship. And that was really shell, like that was just shell talking to me. Like I was just like, almost, I, was, I, I was just so surprised whenever we were able to do that. So really just, I did not think we would get this far. The blog and Cooking for a Cause are only one part of Mason's life. The rest of it is pretty busy. He's a mascot for St. Mary's Catholic School. He plays tennis and runs cross country. And it doesn't stop there. Mason is beta president for the state of Louisiana. He's also a member of the National Honor Society. And that's just to name a few of his accomplishments. We're just very proud of him and who he's become. He's got some time before college to figure it all out. But until then, Mason will continue to lead an inspiring life full of community service. What's the worst news a parent could hear? There are a lot of things that come to mind. Kim Peart Bird and Jeff Andrews heard it in a doctor's office. Reagan was diagnosed with a very rare form of osteosarcoma. It's called telangiectatic. It's a big word, um, osteosarcoma. And I think only 7% of osteosarcomas are that type. It was, uh, uh, it was hard on Reagan. It was hard on Kim. It was hard on Reagan's siblings um, who, were, uh, who were younger. Telangiectatic osteosarcoma accounts for only 4% of osteosarcoma diagnoses. It causes swelling and pain at the site of the tumor, and in some cases, it causes a fracture in the bone. That's how Peart Bird and Andrews found out their nine-year-old daughter, Reagan, was sick. I never really knew the gravity of what cancer really meant. Um, and then from there on out, whenever I had all these different doctor's appointments, there was something wrong, for sure. Reagan's treatment and recovery was a long road. She had surgeries to repair the fracture and get rid of the cancer. She underwent chemotherapy, and she had a prosthetic installed to replace her femur bone. I had to learn to walk again, and that was the worst part, just because it was painful to begin with, and then it, I get really frustrated with myself when I'm not improving as fast as I would like to. In spring 2015, Reagan finished chemo and started recovery. As someone with such an active life, the cancer diagnosis was an adjustment for her. But don't be fooled. Reagan is more than her illness. Reagan is now a scuba diver. Um, Reagan loves to fish, so she's still able to um, fish, and she's always enjoyed that. And um, she took part in the Bella Bowman Foundation. Um, she's still been a supporter of St. Jude and um, also helped with um, the Best Dress Ball in 2017, I believe she um, took part in that. So I think she's trying to give back. Now 17 years old, Reagan has accomplished so much. Her teachers say her strength is motivating. She didn't 
let it become her identity, but at the same time, she um, used this as a way to bring awareness. Lee Grace, one of Reagan's teachers, says bringing awareness to her condition is one of only a few things Reagan's done. She's jumped into leadership roles, inspiring other students and teachers around her. At St. Joseph's Academy, she was up for student council vice president, and she won. She really, really, truly cared about her classmates um, as people and as fellow learners and as people who wanted to make their environment a better place. Um, and they, they really, really worked hard to do that together, um, all really led by her. And she is a true example in at, in and outside of the classroom. Reagan excelled in all of her classes. She holds a 4.4 GPA at St. Joseph's Academy, and she scored a 32 on her ACT. Nearly a perfect score. Louisiana Young Heroes. So when it was time to nominate Young Heroes, she was the perfect fit. After a lot of hard work, it was very gratifying to see that somebody noticed, kind of, because, I mean, there was a lot of things that were going on behind the scenes that I felt nobody really saw, and then they reassured me that they didn't see it. It's been a long road of treatment and recovery, but Reagan wants to move forward and it's clear nothing will stand in her way. The first 10 years of my life, we were always moving around just because we couldn't pay the rent this time, or um, yes, we just we couldn't pay the rent. And then one time we, we stayed at a shelter for around a year. Um, it was fine, but like, I didn't realize how much that sort of affected me, that instability. So I try so much to cultivate stability on my own through what I do. William's mother raised her and her siblings alone. They moved to houses all over the city. Even if she didn't understand the severity of her situation, emotion always slipped through the cracks. I focused on school so, so much. One time I remember I literally just broke down in the hallway in elementary school because I was like, my house just got broken into and I was just, really just inconsolable. So I didn't realize how much moving around was just affecting me, but it's always just the buildup for me. So when things happen, it doesn't take just that one thing. That buildup was enough to shape what would be William's future. Her life became her schoolwork. She was dedicated to succeeding. It was the only way she could guarantee structure, and her teachers noticed. She's uh, very focused and determined because she has so many different things going on. And uh, what I noticed is that she's able to compartmentalize things in a way that she can be successful at all levels. And she certainly uh, showed that in the competition at the Quiz Bowl for the state championship. Williams started a Black History Quiz Bowl Club with a group of students at Baton Rouge Magnet High School, where she attends. We get a study guide and we just go at it. And we just make Quizlets and it's kind of memorization but it's okay because I feel like it's sort of like a tribute to the people who have came before us that we're taking the time to learn about them and how they have trailblazed so we can like sit in this school that we're in because we wouldn't have a long time ago or short time ago. The Quiz Bowl isn't her only accomplishment. She took the title of Student of the Year at the same school, which is a feat. This is a great school. It gives you so many opportunities and the kids really take advantage of them. So everyone here is just so talented and they do something exceptional. So the fact that I was chosen like as someone who does exceptional things when there are so many exceptional people around me really made me proud of myself. Uh, every time I pass the kiosk and I see that picture, I'm like, oh wow, I know her. So she was, and I've even told her, I said, hey, when you become famous, remember you knew Mr. Glenn back in the day. <laughs> Williams partnered with Water Solutions to study the effects of nanoparticles on local water species. And if that's not complicated enough, she also adds physical activity to her list of skills. Williams runs track for her school, and she's got a 4.57 GPA with a 34 on her ACT to match. But as with all chemical equations, she says life needs balance. Art is her release. It's like, this has an answer, and this has an answer, but with art, it's like, there are no answers. You can make the answers by putting whatever you wanna put on the page, and that's what I really love about art. You can just do whatever your mind feels like doing, and then express it through, like, 
conscious stuff, the subconscious. William's future is surely a bright one. She's made sure of it, but what's next? I'm gonna go to Columbia University in New York City. I'm so excited because it was such a beautiful campus and it was sort of like its own little community within the greater community of New York City. So I get to learn about all these cultures and learn to ride the subway, which I'm the most excited about. And her major is easy to guess. I wanna be a chemical engineer, so that's the end. Williams has worked hard to build a life for herself. She's an inspiration to classmates and teachers alike, who all can't wait to see her win. When you watch 17-year-old Gabe Hoosier and see what makes him tick, it quickly becomes apparent why the actions of this soft-spoken teenager from Rapides Parish separate him from the crowd. Well, first of all, um, not only his parent, I'm um, his teacher and his coach. So I've been teaching my own son for three years, high school science at Buckeye High School. Um, and I've been coaching him for just as many years in varsity powerlifting. I'm the um, powerlifting boys and girls coach at our school. So, you know, as a parent, you see a lot of things at home, but sometimes your kids might act a little different at school. And, you know, I'm really proud to say that being there, you know, being a sponsor, being his teacher, I've been able to see what a positive influence he's you know, been and his involvement and his leadership and what a good role model he's been. What is something that Gabe has done that stands out to you? One of the biggest things would be his leadership in our National Honor Society, which really focuses on working with people that are either underprivileged, maybe minorities. Um, like for today, for example, they actually worked with the special needs students of Rapids Parish and there was a prom and he went and worked the prom. Um, same thing with the special needs adults in Alexandria, with the Homeless Coalition, just, you know, a lot of high schoolers are a little bit more self-centered usually and you don't often see them volunteering multiple times a week for other organizations. And although it's few and far between, he's consistently been a leader at our school that's led our chapter in those community service organization activities and people see that and that's you know positive change they want to be involved so Gabe where does that come from for you really my whole entire life I you know I always look around and it's never been I want to look around and see how I can help myself the most I look around and I see somebody else hurting somebody else suffering or any other you know bad things going on in the world and I'm like you know if there's any way that I could help I would love to help and that's pretty much what I do I go around finding any way possible that I can help other people Gabe, there's something called Cinderella's Closet that you're involved in there um, at your school. And tell me exactly what that is. It's a uh, organization that's locally run by the uh, teachers and some of the students where we help children that are not uh, fortunate enough or just, you know, whatever outside circumstances going on. We help kids get a dance, uh, uh, my bad, a dress for either homecoming or prom. Gabe is the oldest of three siblings, with his youngest sister being adopted at birth. That little sister, who is biracial, is one of the joys of Gabe's life, and she can be a teaching opportunity for him when confronted by people with certain judgments. Well, actually, my mom was adopted uh, as a kid, so that actually has a lot to do with our family. You know, she's very proud to be adopted and be raised with the parents that she was raised, and she always wanted to be able to take that chance to adopt one of her own. And uh, obviously, I'm always with her with that. You know, I love my sister at the bottom of my heart. You know, she's very cute. She's loving. She's just a great person to be around. And it was really all because of my mom. It was her idea. She said, you know, I was adopted. This means a lot to me. And I want to be able to help somebody else out too. Just, he's just your normal high school kid that's trying to, you know, have his own fun and, and go to school and, and do sports and make good grades. He's got the normal dreams and aspirations. It's, it's the small things in life that we all do on a day-to-day -day basis that can you know, make a ripple and, and impact the world around you and cause change, you know, and, and I'm real big about that. And he's learning that little by little, and I think that's important for us to do in, you know, raising the next generation. So that's what I hope it does, is it, it makes a change. When Olivia Stringham was 11 years old, she lost an integral part of her family, her mother. She did struggle with an alcohol addiction and um, ultimately she died from alcohol poisoning. And um, so the next morning, you know, she was, she was already gone. So that was ultimately the, um, her, her battles. Tony Stringham fought against alcoholism for about two years and eventually died on April 24th in 2015. It was tough for sure, you know, um, 
losing someone, you know, so close in your life, so unexpectedly, I mean, it, it can rock anybody's world. And so it was definitely tough, but, um, you know, I really leaned into my family. But that's not all Olivia remembers of her mom. Stringham was an amazing mother whose life revolved around her children. And despite her struggle with inner demons, she would have given anything for her family. Olivia holds on to that. And in a way, it gives her peace, but also motivation. I know for sure, you know, like my mom, she struggled with, obviously, if you have any type of addiction, you struggle with some sort of mental health or mental illness. And so I think that was a, one of the big reasons, too, that I did want to get into my mental wellness, you know, awareness and advocating for people who struggle with that because sometimes I think maybe it's not always talked about, like there's a stigma around it. Stringham's devotion to her family was infectious, so much so that Olivia developed an affinity for service. Helping everyone understand mental health and understand the resources became her mission. She worked with the Teen Advisory Committee to create Wellness Wednesdays in both Cato and Bossier Parish schools. So we're hoping that, you know, if kids have morning announcements or assemblies that they can, you know, it'll be brought up in that. And then maybe during lunch hours, if there's a middle central point that students hang out around, if we could just have a table set up or, you know, maybe have a service dog on campus. Wellness Wednesdays is just one of her many accomplishments. Olivia clocked in over 800 hours of community service, volunteering on the weekends. She works at Lighthouse Mission Thrift Store in Vivian, Louisiana, where she's from. The store runs on donations and sells clothing for extremely low prices. The closest clothing department other than boutiques and Walmart would be in Shreveport. And so we, the owner, really wanted to come up with a way for the community to have access to clothes and not break the bank. Working there taught her how to be a small part of a team, how to make a difference through the little things. The best way to love anybody or a community is to serve them. And so that's kind of at the core of who I am. That's how I describe myself and I think the Lighthouse had a huge part in developing that philosophy in me. When high school is over, Olivia plans on studying bioengineering. And from eight of the colleges she's been accepted to, it won't be hard to pursue her dreams. I definitely did not expect to get into two Ivy League schools. Like, I mean, just the sheer amount of qualified applicants is insane. Like, I know Harvard had 60,000 applicants and Yale had 50,000. And I mean, you know, every single one of those students is qualified. It, it just comes down to who do they, you know, who can they invite into their class? Who do they need? What do they want? But which college will she choose? That's a surprise. I've got it down to two. I am going to either go to Yale or Harvard. So I brought, I brought my Harvard hoodie so that people back home watching this would not jump to any conclusions just to let them know that I am still picking between these two. But whatever her choice, Olivia's future is surely a bright one. Support for LPB's 2022 Louisiana Young Heroes is provided by At AmeriHealth Caritas, Louisiana, we help people get care, stay well, and build healthy communities. Care is the heart of our work at AmeriHealth Caritas, Louisiana and by the U.S. Army Baton Rouge Recruiting Battalion, Community Coffee, and the East Baton Rouge Parish Library, with additional support from Hotel Indigo and Dimco.